We're talking about singleness today, and I think this is a topic that's deeply misunderstood. So I wanna take three of the main misconceptions that people have about singleness head on and address them. Here's the first one. The most important thing in life is finding true love. Maybe you've heard that before, but it's just not true. There's more to life than finding the right person or becoming dateable. As a follower of Jesus, we learn that there's something much bigger going on than we can understand. In fact, Jesus talks about this in Matthew 6, 33. Read this with me. Jesus said, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. There's a contrast between how Jesus calls us to live and how our culture says we should live. Our culture tells us to live for ourselves. Jesus tells us to die to yourself. Our culture says love yourself. Jesus says love others as you love yourself. Culture says you have to find one person, the one, to be complete and happy. Jesus says he's the only one who can satisfy our needs. When we focus solely on who we want to be with, we miss out on a whole life that's in front of us that's so much better. So here's what we need to do. We need to focus on becoming the person God wants us to be, not on finding a person we want to be with. Your identity is found as a child of God, not whatever your relationship status is. So the first misconception people have is that the most important thing in life is to find true love, and we know that's not true. But here's another thing that people misunderstand, and it's love. So here's what God says about love in Mark 12, 30 through 31. If you've got a Bible or your phone, you can turn with me here. And this, give you a little context, followers of Jesus just asked him what the most important thing to do in life was, and Jesus responded by giving them two greatest commandments. He, he said this, he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And then the second one is like it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. What Jesus is sharing with us is that love isn't a, something that a person feels. It's something that a person does. Falling in love is easy. Now, all you have to do is be alive. You literally just have to have a pulse and you can fall in love. But truly acting with love requires so much more. Are you a truly loving person? Are you focusing on loving God and others with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength? That's the type of person we all should be. You don't need a boyfriend or a girlfriend to experience real love. Love and romance are not the same thing. If we approach life with the question, how can I find the right person to date or to marry, the Bible is going to be pretty silent. But if we ask, how can I become the right person? Well, that's when the Bible will come alive. So let's ask that question instead. Final misconception, misconception number three, is that singleness is a sin. And this one gets on my nerves. There is not a single command in the entire Bible that gives shame, condemnation, or calls out the sin of being single. It's time for us to stop living our lives in pursuit of the right person and instead start living with purpose. Singleness is not a sin. And it's sad just how many people, especially in the church, feel ashamed for being single. Singleness is not wrong, no matter how old you are. If you're single, hear me right now. God has so much more in store for your life that you will miss if your sole focus is on finding a mate. Now, I've talked with single friends who, because of the way they've been treated, start to feel like the salad that got left out at the buffet for too long and is starting to wilt, like there's something wrong with them but it's not true. That is a lie from Satan, and we shouldn't believe it. What we need to do is start shifting our focus to how God can work in and through us. He wants to use us for good. So whether you're single or not, let's fix our eyes on Christ and start living and loving like he called us to.